In this webinar, we will learn about the science behind and the physiology of antenatal corticosteroids, continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP and surfactant. Let us understand and learn how antenatal corticosteroids work, how does CPAP work and what is the mechanism of working of surfactant. In addition, we will try and learn the synergism between antenatal steroids, CPAP and surfactant in the management of a preterm neonate with respiratory distress syndrome. Let us begin by realizing what is our quantum of preterm births. In India, India has the dubious distinction of having the highest number of preterm births and neonatal deaths due to prematurity. Out of an estimated 2.6 crore or 260 lakhs live births that we have each year, 35 lakh babies are born premature. And out of these, 10 percent, 3 lakh babies die due to complications of preterm births, which is very high for any country. Preterm neonates are vulnerable and fetal lung maturity is the principal contributor for neonatal mortality. Therefore, the lung has been primarily the focus of different strategies to improve the survival of the newborn infant. Strategies for prevention and treatment of RDS have been directed towards the acceleration of fetal lung maturity, mainly by administering antenatal steroids to the mother and continuous positive airway pressure with or without the use of surfactant in the neonates. Out of these three potentially useful strategies for the preterm neonate, let us learn the science and understand how antenatal corticosteroids work. Antenatal corticosteroids accelerate the development of pneumocytes, thus they improve the lung mechanics by which we mean they maximize lung volume and compliance along with a good gas exchange. Antenatal corticosteroids increase surfactant production. There is not just induction of surfactant release, but also absorption of alveolar fluid and increase of lung antioxidant enzymes resulting in reduction of respiratory distress syndrome, reduction in intraventricular hemorrhage, reduction in necrotizing enterocolitis, systemic sepsis and also mortality. After having learnt about antenatal corticosteroids, let us now talk about CPAP. First thing in CPAP is to know what is CPAP. CPAP as it is abbreviated is continuous positive airway pressure which really refers to application of continuous pressure to the airways during both inspiration and expiration in a spontaneously breathing baby. Now we will try and understand what it actually does. CPAP keeps the alveoli open by providing constant airway pressure as also it splints the airways so that they do not collapse. Thus, these increase the functional residual capacity of the lung resulting in better breathing on the part of the baby and better gas exchange culminating in lesser lung injury. Let us now understand how CPAP helps the baby. In a baby with respiratory distress syndrome, as we discussed earlier, the functional residual capacity of the lung that is the FRC is reduced. What is FRC? It is nothing but the volume of air that is present in the lungs at the end of normal expiration. Reduced FRC allows the alveoli to collapse at the end of expiration. And what CPAP does? CPAP increases the FRC which helps to keep the alveoli open, decreases the ventilation perfusion mismatch and thus improves oxygenation, washes out CO2 and improves the pH in the baby. In addition to this, it splints the upper airways which prevent obstructive apnea and it dilates the lower airways which reduce the airway resistance. So overall, the tidal volume improves, the work of breathing decreases and with improved physiology, the pneumocyte 2 which produce surfactant function better. They do better recycling and also better production of surfactant. So overall, this culminates in improved lung compliance and better gas exchange. So all in all, CPAP is like magic. It opens the lung at FRC, causes better gas exchange keeps the lung open with minimal pressure 
this is in stark difference to conventional ventilation. Thus, there is negligible barotrauma, baby is breathing spontaneously deciding its own tidal volume, so no volute trauma, but the most important thing is that there is no endotracheal tube and there is no biotrauma. Pulmonary arterial pressures are least with improved blood flow, hence less ventilation perfusion mismatch and better gas exchange. Having understood the magic of CPAP, let us understand the relationship between the lung volume which is depicted on the x axis and the pulmonary vascular resistance which is shown on the y axis. PVR or pulmonary vascular resistance is least when the lung is open at the FRC. At this, the blood flow is maximal with best ventilation perfusion matching and the best gas exchange. Now you can see on the right side the baby with meconium aspiration syndrome. He has high lung volume while on the left side this baby with high lean membrane disease has much lower lung volume but both, both of them result in high PVR. So on both sides you see that the pulmonary vascular resistance is high. In clinical practice for a baby on CPAP with higher pressures the lung will over distend while with low CPAP it will cause reduced FRC. In both the situations PVR will increase causing shunting of blood from the right side to the left side impairing pulmonary blood flow. Thus, we must ensure that the lung is opened at FRC for best blood flow and better gas exchange. We must now understand how do alveoli function. The alveoli are actually lined with water molecules which tend to pull the alveoli towards the center. So, this is collapsing towards the center. Now, this can be either nullified by a pressure which is extending outwards which can be done by CPAP or by reducing the surface tension by giving surfactant which will line the alveolar lining. If both are done simultaneously, we can expect that there would be synergistic action which can be obtained. Now, this synergistic action has gone into clinical practice and is called as insure. I am sure you are familiar with what is insure, intubate, surfactant and extubate. Going further from this, let us see how surfactant works. Pulmonary surfactant is a surface active lipoprotein complex which has phospholipoproteins. This is formed by type 2 alveolar cells or type 2 pneumocytes. The main lipid comp component of the surfactant which is dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine or DPCC is the one which reduces surface tension. They thus increase pulmonary compliance, prevent atelectasis which means collapse of the lung at the end of expiration and also facilitate recruitment of the collapsed airways. So, what have we learnt? Hence, we learnt that CPAP is safe as it causes less lung injury. One should give optimal CPAP to open the lung at the FRC as discussed earlier, so that the pulmonary vascular resistance is least with maximal blood flow. Use of surfactant and CPAP together is beneficial in RDS. It is also very important to understand that CPAP will give maximum dividends if you use antenatal corticosteroids for preterm labor, provide early surfactant when required and have good delivery room care. Thank you.